you're using that perceived notion of what it might sound like and you're playing on people's expectations. My name is Peter Grace and I'm the Location Sound Recordist on Hexel Ridge. Hi, I'm Justine Angus and I was the Supervising ADR Editor. Hi, I'm Liam Price, I'm the Sound Effects Editor and I did all the guns and bullet sounds. That's our objective, Hexel Ridge. We take it, maybe we get Okinawa. We get Okinawa, we take Japan. Take a breather, our pals in the Navy are gonna soften them up for us. You've got one target as a sound recordist, and that is to remove the dialogues from everything else. And here, your target is to get zero everything else. It'll never happen, but that's what you're always working towards. And you do that by marking techniques, and most often than not, that's going to be radio mark. It's a reductive process. What you're trying to do is you're trying to remove sound as much as you're trying to get it. And you're never there to make a decision about how the dynamics should play between atmosphere and effects and dialogue. That is not your role. You never do it. You do the opposite. You actually extract it and you go, and you go for zero backgrounds and that, 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 that's your aim. You, you then make up for that by giving strategies for cutting. You have your dialogue tracks and then on adjacent tracks you can actually throw microphones on the background sound. So if, if there's a steam train going past in the background, You'd, you'd like to isolate that, but if it only travels by once and you'll never get it again, you, you've got to throw everything at that steam train. So you can get sync effects and atmospheres if you wish, or you can spend time afterwards recreating those effects and atmospheres if you have the ability to do so. What we did is we did some wild tracks. We took the grease gun, which is Vince Vaughan's gun, out and we recorded that at various proximities and stereo and mono and, and one or two others. Um, they probably were useful as temp tracks only. Everything that went bang was recorded all the time. It was either, either done by first unit or it was done by second unit. There was no expectation that any of that would be used. Some of it was, I, I believe. It would have been handy for the first picture cut and I, I'd say fairly quickly thereafter it was replaced particularly the explosions, because explosions didn't work at all. They were just fantastic to look at, but uh, the sound they made was just, didn't match the eye. So the ear didn't match the eye at any point during any of the explosions. And so that would have been a fairly, I'd imagine, urgent job to... Yeah, so the first, yeah, yeah the tent yeah. was like, do the explosions. <laughs> Straight off, <laughs> yeah. it was like, yeah. right, yeah. okay. Um, and just add that crunch and yeah. mayhem. <laughs> Rob was saying before in the other interview that there's a lot of bespoke kind of sound recordists out there who sell their wares online. There's a library called The Recordist and he just he just does bullets and zip whip buys and zips and hits and all sorts of things. So I use a lot of that. But that again, you know, added a element of authenticity, but then in the mix, it just once you pile on everything else and the dialogue, the music, it just it's too thin. It doesn't have any gravitas. It just gets like it's you know, then you go, oh, well, that's, I've lost that dramatic effect. So having Rob's little synthesized element to it and then had just heavy whooshes, you know, bamboo, waving a bamboo rod in front of the microphone kind of sounds, so you get that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, often, the more authentic you are, the less authentic mm. you, 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 exactly. you perceive to be. <laughs> yeah, so you so you, you're using that perceived notion of what it might sound like and you're playing on people's expectations. Mm. And um, also, you're just you're trying to create an emotion with the yeah. sound as mm. well. Yeah, exactly. So you want to evoke responses in people. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> using sound to do that, mm. because you know the picture's only going to tell so much of the story. What brings it home is what we do. Mm. You know, so what fifty percent of your cinema experience, sixty percent of your cinema experience is sound. Creating the battlefield stuff, there's a lot of obviously explosions and gunfire going on, but also what makes it real is uh, all the voices that you hear, all the off screen stuff that you don't see but you hear. So, you know, we had Loop Group come in, all the actors that came in to re record their lines, we'd also get them to do screams off 
moans, calls for help, and then <clears throat> start to build up all these layers so that then you feel like you are on a battlefield, you know, that you've got people screaming for help. <laughs> the Japanese commander calling out to, to fire. You've got the Americans doing the same and <clears throat> then you're trying to weave it all together so that it's not this barrage that's competing with gunfire or whatever, but so that it's all woven together so that you almost like a symphony, you know? You're creating space when it's needed and then having pummeling the audience with sound to get that really visceral emotional response out of them. And then taking a step back for a moment so that you can have some breathing space before we hit them again mm -hmm. with more. Mm -hmm. And and then they'll be quiet. Suddenly there's a ceasefire, but then you start to hear these voices off screaming and calling and crying and sobbing and that's how you start to build an epic soundtrack. <laughs> It, it's, it was a symbiotic kind of thing between the, all the chaos of, of metal flying around and then the pain and the screaming that tied to it sort of made it worse. And, or the bullets and everything don't have any effect if you don't hear the The, the, the result, carnage. The carnage. <laughs> and and you know, as, a, as an audience person that makes you feel ugh, on mm. edge and you know, has all that emotion and horrible feeling you get. You have to use Foley with the ADR to make it sit in the environment and you know have air and atmospheres around it, whether that be stuff that is pulled out of the location sound that then you lay up as a, as a fill bed to help it bed better in the environment, as well as using all the Foley so it actually feels as if that voice is married to that action and that person. It doesn't matter how good the, the ADR recording is, you know, what microphones you use, what techniques you use, it's still going to sound like it's not of that moment in time mm. when they were shooting. Help! Help me! Watch out! I got you! Put your hand on me. Keep pressure on me. I'm coming back, okay? Okay. Oh. If you enjoyed this masterclass and want to see more content like this, subscribe to Afters.